My name is Albert Castillo. This is uh, Justine Tompkins on the bass. And Mr. Ephraim Lowell on the drums. Big boss man got a big 
I was 15 years old when I heard Muddy Waters for the first time. I heard, heard about him, and I went and uh, went to the uh, Sounds of Music record store in Coral Gables, Florida, right next to Denny's there on the edge of Miracle Mile, and I bought the only Muddy Waters record they had there. It was Hard Again was the name of the album. And Johnny Winter had produced it. And I heard Muddy's voice for the first time. I played the cassette in my cassette player. And uh, I heard Muddy's booming voice go, oh, yeah. And I crapped my pants and hid under the bed because it, it was the most intimidating voice I ever heard in my life. And then the band came in. And that was it. That's what I knew what I wanted to do with my life. A 15-year-old kid from the suburbs had his life planned for him. Uh, but I knew what my purpose was. And it was not to claim the music as my own. It was to serve the music and make sure that it never died. So we're going to do some songs by those masters that inspired me. And this is one of them. And it's by the great, late, great Little Milton. It goes like this. See? Right. story and it's a happy story. It doesn't start off happy, but it ends happy and hopefully it'll, it'll continue on to being a, a good story. So about a month ago I caught the Rona. I got through it, but it wasn't easy. It was so bad. My wife would not let come into the bedroom until I tested negative. So it was a long time. It was so bad, I wrote a song about it. It's gonna be on the next album. It's called, You Better Be Negative or We Ain't Gonna Be Positive. <laughs> Thank God she had a doctor's appointment last week. And the doctor said I had a, gave me a clean bill of health and I got enough antibodies to last until 2050. And she came back to bed. But every now and then I get these lingering problems. You know, I get this, this tightness in my chest. And I went and I played here last night, did the acoustic show last night. Played two hours and 15 minutes straight. Felt great. Went to eat. My wife calls me and said, hey, you're going to go see Eric Gales? He's playing up the street. Eric is a, Gales is the greatest living guitar player in the, in the world. If you've seen him, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen him, better go see him and he's a good friend of mine and I said I'm, I think I'm gonna go see him I'm feeling up for it I hung up the phone I had some food and then I started to feel weird I started to get tired I called my wife I said I'm not gonna go see him I don't feel good and she said okay stop calling me she hung up on me and then Eric texted me I said are you coming I really want to see you I said okay and I went up there and I said screw it I'm going up there I called her again and I said I'm gonna go see him. She hung up on me. I guess that man was okay. I drove up there and I played with him and I felt good. And I didn't think about what was going on with, inside of me. And I've come to the conclusion that it's the music that's keeping, keeping me going. And it's y'all that keep me going. I've never, I've never half-stepped it ever on stage ever in my life. But if this whole experience taught me anything, is that that will never ever happen. So tonight, I'm going all out for you, like I always do. And so I just wanted you to know where it was coming from. So thank you.
You know my baby told me Not so very long ago She said I don't love you yeah, but And you got to let me go That was too much for me That's why I walk the back streets and cry
Mistaken, he had a song called There's Three People in, in My Bed Me and You and the Guy in Your Head. <laughs> Just so you know, pick it up, check it out, it's pretty good. Like I said, I'm not a blues man, I'm just a disciple. We're gonna do another song by a great. Musician, uh, my favorite of all the kings, Freddie King. Yes. And uh, we did a real slow one, so we're going to balance it out and get you a real heavy, hard one. This one might be the, this beat might be the song that does me in. Let's see how it goes. It's a song called Boogie Funk.
did you say? You were crying? That's not always a good thing in my case. I usually when people are crying on my shows, it's really for a wrong reason. So thank you, thank you. I'm glad it's tears of joy this time. Have you no shame? Oh man. We haven't done that one in a long time. Come on, Lendl. Give me something uh, we can work with here. I think that's a great song, but we haven't played that in a while. You want to hear a real bad version of it? I mean, come on. Help, help me out here. South. Hey, that's another one we don't do because nobody ever requests it. Give me another one. You're all for two, folks. Come on, help me out. Stank? Who said stank? Was that you, Betty? Of course, Betty. You know, we're going to stank it up for you right now. But since I can't smell, I won't be able to enjoy it like you will. <laughs> hey, Lily. Oh, I know I got to do a song for you. I know which song I got to do for you. I'm going to do that one, too. Thank you for doing my set list for me tonight. Thank you. That one, we're going to do that one, too. This is... This is audience participation night tonight, ladies and gentlemen. You make the set list. My set list, boom, we're done with it. What song are we going to do now? Outstanding. It's a love song. Hope you like it. It's an aria. One, two, three, four.
liking this audience participation shit. I like this. This is working for me. All right, you got uh, you said what? Too much second all? Let's do that one, and then we'll do uh, we'll do the one this gentleman here in the in the blue shirt requested. Masterpiece here. We'll do that one for sure. Let's do a little Johnny Winter. This is off our Masterpiece album. We won uh, we won the uh, Blues Music Award for Best Blues Rock Album of the Year last year. That's cool. Yeah. That was a very special moment because it was a uh, it was a uh, virtual award ceremony. And they had a, and the presenter of that particular category was none other than Mr. Warren Haynes from the Almond Brothers and Government Mule. So they shot the they shot his parts in, in his house. And when he when he shot the, the when they did the uh, introduction, he goes, "All right, thank you for coming, uh, watching, and we're going to do the uh, the uh, the nominees for the best blues rock album are." And then they cut away. Before that, he didn't have a beard on. They cut away. And then the on-air announcer announced it, and blah, 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 Albert Castilla. And then they announced it, and it was me. Awesome. And then they go back to Warren, and he's got a full beard, and he's wearing a completely different shirt. And then he goes, congratulations. What a special moment in my life. It was pretty awesome. They had different clothes. They changed for the, for the announcement. It was pretty awesome. So we're gonna do this uh, song. It was written by my my friend and guitar player who meant so much to me, Mr. Johnny Winter. And it's a song called Too Much Second All. Yeah, man, why are you going, yeah, man? You have a flashback, homie?
Songs also on our live album, Wild and Free. You know, we we recorded right here at the Funky Biscuit. We did two nights in January of uh, last year, 2000, and we put the album out in uh, April of 2020. And uh, we named it Wild and Free. Ain't that a bitch? Got on lockdown, and we had put out an album called Wild and Free. Needless to say, it didn't sell very well. And we have a thousand of them in my car for sale because we not only did we have a tour the title was a sore subject with some people They're like wow that freak screw you so we have plenty of these we got a lot of stuff for sale from last year and we have an unusually amount large amount of ladies t-shirts that we can't you know we're trying to get rid of so i'm selling them for 10 bucks tonight ladies cut t-shirts Guys, if you want to get freaky, you can buy them too. And don't bother me. Because ain't no shame in nobody's game. It's a great record, by the way, and I'm very proud of it. I think it's, it's one of the, it, it my, it's my second favorite album uh, behind Masterpieces. It's a really great live album. Oh, you have a question now, okay. What is it, Betty? We have many colors, we have uh, black and blue. And a little gray, we have some gray. We have gray, we have gray. What's that? that gray, gray. There you go. So we're gonna, we're gonna do the title track of Masterpiece. Um, the album is not called Masterpiece because I was arrogant and I thought the album was a masterpiece. It's because it was inspired by a wonderful occurrence in my life. I found out in 2018 that I have a daughter, that I had a daughter, and uh, yeah. it's the greatest. Yeah, please clap, because it wasn't like Maury Povich kind of shit. I wouldn't like, I didn't run away or anything, and, or haul ass and, and, and run out the door. And it, was, it was a great gift, and I was like, hey, I could use more excitement in my life. Let's do this. Yeah. And then I found out I got two, uh, two grandchildren on top of it. So. Wow. A lovely wow. granddaughter, uh, Sophia and uh, my grandson, Avery. And uh, it's just been a wonderful, wonderful blessing. Yeah. And this is the, this song was uh, inspired by the day that I, uh, my paternity was confirmed and I, I uh, sent my daughter a letter and uh, I told her how happy I was that she found me and that uh, she was never gonna be without me again. And I told her I'd been an artist my whole life, but she was my masterpiece. And I wrote that and I said, damn, that's a good lyric. We could put a song in this. So we're putting it in, we put it in this song and, and we're gonna do it for you now.
Since that happened, there's been nothing but really cool stuff. You know, it turns out she sings, and she's a very good singer. My, uh, my uh, baby mama is a great singer. Uh, when we grew up you know, together, she used to sing like uh, classic rock stuff. She got me into like the last couple of Zeppelin albums when we were kids and stuff. And then this happened, you know, I hadn't seen her for a while, and this happens, and, and it turns out my daughter is a really good singer. She sings like kind of Joan Baez, Judy Collins, very folky, soft, beautiful voice. And she sings in her mother's band. Her mother's got a, a Stevie Nicks tribute band up in uh, Melbourne. And we're doing a festival together uh, next week. And I'm playing the Friday, and her mother's band's playing the Saturday. My daughter plays in the band with her mom. And she's going to sit in on my set. My daughter is. Yeah. We're going to do some Bob Dylan and stuff. That's okay. So yeah, it just, uh, it's good stuff. makes life worth living kids and stuff man that's really we're going to do another uh, song off our um, wild and free album that's also on our uh, i think it's on my living the dream record it's a paul butterfield number and it's called loving cup and i want to dedicate it to all y'all cuz y'all is the straw that stirs my loving cup All right, we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna do this. This is gonna be the last song of the set, and we're gonna take a little break. Well, we're coming back. Don't go anywhere. Have some drinks. Get your bubble on. Come on now. Help the bar. Help Mike back there in the bar. He look like he's, he's, he's uh, you know, he's not doing anything. Get him busy. Work his old lazy ass out. Get his lazy ass working. But we'll be right back, and we have uh, CDs and T-shirts for sale. If anybody wants me wants uh, one, just come meet me at the. Oh, well, I'm gonna go to my office and pick some up, my van, and bring some over for you. I'd like to introduce a band to you on the bass, the lovely and talented Miss Justine the Bean Tompkins. <laughs> Mr. Ephraim Lowell on the drums. Is Al Poliak here? Where is he? I want to I want to bring you up to play while you're still standing. What? That was the idea, to play keyboard, yes. Really, take your time, Al. I know you own the place and you can do whatever you want. <laughs> but yeah, by the way, give it up for Al Poliak and his, and his partner, Ira Maltz, for keeping this, uh, this venue alive. It wasn't easy. And they got a lot of great shows coming up for the upcoming year. Mike Zito will be here, my good friend Mike Zito will be here. I might have to go to that one, I don't know. Depends on how he treats me. Johnny Rawls! Man, y'all need to see Johnny Rawls from Mississippi, man. That's my brother right there. He's the soul blues master. Played with Sam Cooke, and he's awesome. Shaw Davis in the Black Ties, my good friend Shaw Davis from Pompano Beach, Deerfield. It's gonna, it's gonna be a great year, a great summer. All right. We got some Junior Wells coming up next year. That's my blood, that's my godfather. It's an E minor and an A minor. And uh, yeah, it's just a chord. I got Oh, I'm sorry. Don't get touchy. These key, these piano players are very they're very touchy. <laughs>
He's sitting there drinking from that loving cup.
Thank you.